Hi guys, welcome to Chakri Science Academy. In today's session, we will discuss very important competency-based questions from alcohol phenol ether. And if you remember, in the last video, we have discussed competency-based questions from halolki and halorine. If you haven't watched this video, make sure you watch it. You will find the link in the description box below. So let's start the first question today. The question says aromatic compound A having a molecular formula C6H6O. So see, I'm going to tell you how to approach this type of question. So let's write up all the given hints in the form of flowchart. That is the first step to approach this type of questions. So first, the A compound has a formula C6H6O. And it says when you react it with chloroform and KOH, CHCl3 and KOH. So it will give you two isomeric forms B and C. These two are isomers. Now, B and C will give you a common compound when you distill them with a zinc dust that is called D. D on oxidation will give you E. For E now what we have to take? We have to take the sodium salt. So in order to obtain a sodium salt, okay, we need to react it with NaOH. Then only we, will, we can obtain sodium salt of E. So I'll write it here, Na salt of E. So once you get the salt of E, it says that you add soda lime. We know where it is going. It is going to be a decarboxylation where you remove the CO2 in the form of carbonate. So when, okay, so it will give us F. Now the question says you can obtain the F, okay, from the A also when you add the zinc dust. So I think by looking at all the given hints, we know what is our compound A. First of all, look at the formula. A is the aromatic compound, number one. Number two, there is only one oxygen. So, and on top of that, F, on adding a zinc dust, it gives F. So, by that, we can obtain the F also. So, many hints are given, we can relate. So, it is. it has to be a phenol, C6H5OH. This must be a phenol and when you add a zinc dust, zinc will remove the oxygen and it gives you benzene. C6H6. It will form benzene. Now, why I was very much sure that it is a phenol only? Because first of all, this reaction, zinc dust wala. Second reaction is this, that if you see carbon and it says aromatic compound is there. Okay, and one oxygen is there. That is why. Third, if you see, they have given a Riemer-Tiemann reaction. It's a very important name reaction, Riemer-Tiemann. Where you add chloroform KOH or NaOH, it will give you salicylic dehyde. Okay. So, we know phenol is at ortho and para directing. So, the two isomers, the aldehyde group will be present at ortho and para position. So, let's do it. So, you can see first of all, here the phenol, I will mark it at ortho position. Another isomer will be at para position. Yeah. Now, what we, we know what will happen when we add zinc dust. So, it will take out this oxygen from both the isomers and it will give you benzaldehyde. So, this gives a benzaldehyde, okay? Because zinc will remove the OH ka O, okay? ZNO. Now, benzaldehyde ko when you oxidize, it will form benzoic acid. So, this will give you a benzoic acid. Now, in order to obtain the salt of sodium, it will form sodium benzoate when we react with NaOH. So, this must be a C double O N A sodium benzoate. And when you carry out a decarboxylation reaction, this CO2 will be removed in the form of Na2CO3. You can see that. So this whole thing will be removed. This entire thing will be removed. Na2CO3 will be removed. Hydrogen only will be present here. That means the F is nothing but benzene, a double confirmation. One confirmation we got from this hint, another from this. So in this way, the first question is over. And now let's move to the second question. Okay, so in the second question, it says an organic compound A with the molecular formula C6H6O gives violet color with neutral ferric chloride. So I think we have the same compound as the previous one. That is phenol. So let's write a flowchart. So this is C6H6O and it gives a neutral ferric chloride, okay, violet color. So a lot of hint is there when you react it with, you know, ferric chloride. So we know what is going to happen. When we add FeCl3, we know phenol gives a positive test for FeCl3 and it changes into a violet color substance. So, two hints are given. First is the formula. Second is the 
FeCl3 test, which is given up by phenol. So what do we get here? C6H6 with FeCl3. So it forms C6H5O whole thrice and there will be Fe. So this compound will be violet. This is the violet color substance. And this can this reaction can be used to test the phenol also. Now, after that, it says compound A when reflux with chloroform KOH. So this is the same reaction where we are going. When we add chloroform and KOH, in place of KOH, NaOH can be also used. I think the question is written as NaOH. So what do we get here? So again, Riemer Tiemann reaction, salicylaldehyde. So one will be one CHO group will be at ortho position, and another it will be at para position. Now the question says it gives two isomers that is B and C. So that was obvious. And now it says compound A when added to diazomethane. This is something new. So in this compound A, when you add a diazomethane, diazomethane means it's CH2N2. This is called diazomethane. So in alkaline medium, so diazomethane is added in alkaline medium. So it gives an ether. So we know what ether will come up here. That will be a, an isole that is OCH3. We call it as an isole. Okay. So and it tells you to identify A, B, C, D and D. So A was the phenol, which is C6, H5OH. This was A. This substance was the isomers B and this was C and this is your anisole. So remember what you have learned that on phenol, whenever you add a diazomethane, it can directly change into anisole. Now let's see the third question. So in this third question, it says a compound A with molecular formula C4H10O. Let's write it down. So we have a compound A, its formula is C4H10O. It says on oxidation, it forms B. So if you do the oxidation, it will be giving you B. Now about B, it says it gives a positive iodoform test. So the hint we have, there is a positive iodoform test for the B. Now it says, and on reaction with CH3MGBr, which is a Grignard's reagent, Followed by hydrolysis, it gives C. It means the B, first it reacts with, uh, you know, CS3MGBR. And then followed by acid hydrolysis, H, H2O, H+. So followed by acid hydrolysis, it gives you C. Now understand, how do we identify A, B and C? So for the substance B, a lot of information is given. First, it says that B is a positive, it's giving a positive iodoform test. Also, it says it reacts with Grignard reagent. So it has to be having a alpha methyl ketone that we know. It must be having a alpha methyl ketone. So I think we have enough heat. The number of carbon is four and only one oxygen. So it double confirms that on oxidation, it will be a ketone. And this must be a second degree alcohol because when you oxidize the second degree alcohol, it will form a ketone. That's how we do. So four carbon means it must be this. CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. Now you can see because it has alpha methyl and it now it will react with Grignard reagent. So and how it would have been obtained by oxidation. So this is a ketone. This must be alcohol. The first we'll create a two degree alcohol. Then we'll recheck with the formula. So let's write the alcohol now. CH3, COH and CH2, CH3. So dear students, you can see that it's perfectly matching in our formula. We have 10 hydrogen here. You can see 5 plus 3, 8. And I missed one hydrogen here, 9 and 10. You can see that. So it is a 2 degree alcohol. And which on oxidation gives a ketone. How we know it was a ketone? Because it reacts with Grignard reagent, number one. Number two, it's a, it, it is giving a positive iodoform test. So there must be alpha methyl ketone. And the carbon number was 4. That's how we obtained. Now let's add the RMGX on it followed by acid hydrolysis. So in this ketone, we know what is going to happen. This oxygen will take up the pi electron O minus and C plus. So what will happen? How do we add the RMGX? So CH3 MgBr. Now in Grignard reagent, you know, this is a ionic bond. This is a ionic bond. This is the covalent bond, right? So whenever you break, you always have to break the covalent bond. 
so there will be a cleavage so mg plus ch3 minus now what will happen this minus will go to the c plus and mg plus and br will go to oxygen so what is the product we will get so we will get ch3 o minus mg br and here ch3 ch2 ch3 was already there and another ch3 came here now when you do acid hydrolysis here so when you add h plus in the presence of i mean water in the presence of this so what will happen this oh minus will be taken up by the mgbr so what do you remove you will remove this mgbr oh will be removed this will be gone and this h plus will go to the o minus this h plus will go to the o minus so as a result what do we get ch3 c here you have the oh and you have ch3 and here c2h5 so technically we have got a three degree alcohol so now let's see one more question the fourth one so in the fourth question you can see you have to create the flow chart in the same manner and you have to find out the answer i am very sure after watching this video you have got the right approach and you have got some concepts and i am very sure you will be able to get these questions so keep preparing for your exam and keep following chakravarti science academy and don't forget to mention the answer in the comment box below in the form of iotsc naming bye bye for now